Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy. My guest today went from being undrafted to being a key part of the LA Chargers backfield. He carries the rock and then rocks out in the end zone. Running back Austin Eckler is here. It's so good to meet you. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. So I've had a couple of your teammates on the show, and they all say that you're a complete workout freak. Mm -hmm. Is it true that you are always in the gym? Uh, it's just, you know, what I find it in my in my personal life to be like my my therapy. You know, it's something I do just to get away from things and just let my mind, you know, clear. And it's, it's fun, too, for me. When I'm in the gym, I, like, have to have the right kind of music on or it just mm -hmm. kills the whole vibe and I can't really work out that much. What do you listen to when you're in the gym? Uh, as you said, you know, I'm rocking out, so that's just all so hard. So, like, classic rock? No. Oh. See, classic rock, if I'm, like, driving in the car or anything like that, it'll be, like, classic rock. But okay. if I'm in if I'm in the gym, it's usually something a little bit harder. But, such like as? Some metal, like some... Metal? Oh, yeah, definitely metal. Like, I need some instruments. Whoa. Like, as that's, like, like you know, ACDC? <laughs> a little, a little mo more modern than that. Like, Who? Uh, Give me some. Like some Slipknot, some Metallica. Like, Slipknot. Like straight up, like we're banging our instruments as loud as we can, and we're screaming. You're the guy yeah. I'm terrified of in the gym, <laughs> probably by what you can bench press and what you're listening to. Um, what is the most impressive thing you can do in the gym? Um, I just posted a video a couple weeks ago. I was doing a, a one arm pull up. I'd say that's the thing at the moment. Uh, I did a little challenge on there, and it was I did see how many one-arm pull-ups you can do. I did two, and then I haven't got anyone else that's uh, sent me anything, so we'll see. We'll you challenge people to see how many one-arm pull-ups yeah, they you know, can do? Yeah, raise the bar a little bit. You I know? don't think there's many people out there that can do even one, like yeah, I mean, let alone two-armed pull-ups. I've, uh, I've seen some people that have been able to do a couple. That's what inspired me. I was like, oh, I'll try it out, you know. And so I haven't seen anyone in the league. You know, the league always posts, like, you know, people doing a bunch of weight and stuff like that, so I always send them, like, what I'm doing and things. Yeah, and you so were just on Finally, there. finally, yeah, they posted. They just posted it on there. That on was like, I was trying to count how many there were on each side. How much weight was that? Uh, it was like 507 pounds. That you were squatting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 500 and what pounds? 507. My, 507 My friend tells me, he's like, if the bar's not bending, you're just pretending. So you're like, all right, put some more on. That is insane. <laughs> That's like benching, yeah. what, four of you? I, bench, I, was, I was squatting. So. Or squatting four yeah, of you. Yeah, what can was, you bench? Uh, like 380. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So your first regular season NFL carry was pretty memorable, huh? It was. It was. You know, as we were playing the Eagles, it was like three games in, and you know, before the first two games, I would get in on offense, maybe one or two plays, but then my main role was special teams, and so finally I get in in the Eagles game, and we're down by a little bit, and in, we. Were, I still remember the play. It was thirty cheese. And it's like, 30 well, cheese. That's what we call the play, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it just simplifies everything so we don't have to like, trap to the right and we run into, you know, things 30 like that. Cheese. okay. And so, you know, run a trap and boom, my first regular season carry is like a 34 yard touchdown. And just the emotion that came upon me, I just, I didn't understand, you know, or realize what just happened basically. Like my mind just went blank and I was just screaming and flexing <laughs> as hard as I could. You know, because I wasn't You're even flexing expected. flexing as hard as oh, you could. I was just flexing and screaming and jumping as hard Aww. as I could. Just and I, you know, all the supporters from everyone because they're like, oh, he scored. He yeah. actually scored, you know, because she was just a special teams guy who didn't really make an impact Aww. as far as uh, offense. Sure. And, yeah, something I'll never forget, you know. Did you get to keep the ball? <laughs> I did, yeah. You yeah, did? Everyone, they painted it up for me, and so I got it, you know, back home on my shelf. Oh, it's on your shelf. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, your touchdown celebration mm -hmm. was air guitar. Mm -hmm. Now, listening to your music choices when you're in the gym, that kind of makes yeah. sense to me. Exactly. Was that spontaneous or you had that planned? Uh, it was something I've actually talked about it with my roommates even before I was in the NFL back in college and I was like, oh, that'd be a pretty cool celebration. And that's just because I listened to that music back then too. And it's just kind of the same feeling I get when I'm in the gym, you know, when you score, it's just this big energy that you just build upon you and with the crowd and it's everything. And it's not like I'm just like strumming the guitar, I'm like hitting like just like straight up the metal, you know, just like, yes, you know, letting all the energy out. Is this like the Metallica? You know, like all the, of it, okay, yeah, okay. just headbanging. Like if you watch the celebration, yeah, it's definitely, it's not like a little strum, it's all no. into it. Break the string yeah. and everything, yeah. Break the <laughs> strings. Do you play the actual guitar? I don't. I no. don't. Would you take a no. lesson? See, I don't know, because that's just a lot to put into it, and it's just like, I, you know, I'd rather spend time doing other things. Like working out? Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Melvin Gordon's nickname is Flash. Mm -hmm. We could call you Slash, <laughs> and then you guys could be Flash and Slash. Do you like uh, that? I mean, it's not bad. 
It's, it's a good bad. backfield. We don't, we don't have a backfield name, so, you know, we don't have, we're, this is just some duo, but no name, so. No, this is perfect. Yeah, there, there we go. Slash and Flash. There it is. Or Flash and Slash. That is actually, I, I'll propose Do it you want to use that too? I'm, I'm going to use it until otherwise no. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And then you can also talk to the team about doing your end zone celebration as a full-on, yeah, yeah. like, We need to get a band. band. You need a bit, definitely get a band going, this for is, sure. This is perfect. How yeah. competitive are you with Melvin? Uh, I'd say that's our whole relationship. <laughs> it's just you know? com being competitive? It's just literally just our competitive relationship. I'm, I'm, we're definitely teammates. We can work together. We're fine. But we're definitely to have that competitive relationship as far as like, hey, we're trying to win. The, we're trying to win for our team and win for ourselves. It almost probably makes you better, right? Cause it absolutely does. Yeah, because your like, competition's ooh, great. Mel's balling out today. Like, let's go, Austin. Step up. You know, I'm yeah. telling myself that. Okay. Yeah, and I, he's probably saying the same thing. He's. I mean, we don't need to tell each other that. It's just who we are. The Chiefs made a lot of headlines this off season. Obviously, mm -hmm. so did the Raiders. Do you feel like the Chargers don't get the kind of love that they deserve? Uh, I don't. I don't know what it is. I really don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because we just moved. And, you know, some of our San Diego fans are still mad at us that we moved. <laughs> and then we came up to L.A. where there's already a few teams and the, L and the Rams came back. And so, yeah, our, our, our seating in our stadium right now, yeah, it's a little uh, <laughs> split right down the middle for all of our games. It's like so away games when you're home. It really is. It really is. You know, we still have those loyal people that are up there, you know, every time. But it's just expensive, too, because our... Our stadium's so small, so it's just the logistics of how many games you can actually go to. Is it hard to, to kind of like get up for a home game when it's not even really feeling like a home game? Ah, uh, I will say it is easier to get more excited for a away game for sure. I don't know what it is. Really? It's just, I don't know if it's because I just like when I come out of the tunnel and everyone's booing me. I don't know if that's what it is, and I'm just like, yeah, like let's go. You know, it's yeah. us, us against everyone in this place, or. If, because when I go to the home game, like we still have cheers and everything. Like I think I think it's just like the magnitude of like how many people we have. Yeah. So home games <clears> more <throat> of a neutral thing. Yeah. It really is. It really is. You know, there's no way to hide it. You can go to our game and look. You I know? have been, yeah, and it is exactly. It's, it's split. It's yeah. Neutral. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Kobe Bryant visited you guys. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that he said that kind of stuck out with you? He's a legend in LA. Yeah, he is. He is. I think he has like office in our building or something like that. Which Does cool. he? Yeah. You know, I told. So him you could just like, like really? You seen Kobe? He's like, yeah, man. He's like. It's, it's different, though, because, like, when you actually meet someone, it, like, humanizes them. You know, if you see him on TV and that's all you see him, it's like, wow, this person, you know, the, you know they're subhuman, like, not supernatural. It's like, no, he's just a normal person with normal problems, you know. Like, he's definitely on a different level as far as, like, influentially and, like, financially, things like that. Yeah. But that's, he's still a human. You know, and so no, can you go knock on his door? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if Maybe we just have all have access. I mean, yeah, he's, you could, you hmm. know, but if if you have that relationship, but I think it, the thing that he said that stuck with me that I won't forget is just just swat the gnats. That's what he said. You just swat the gnats. He's like, if you're a tiger and you're looking at your prize, you're, you're hungry, you're gonna go eat that thing, and the gnats are all in your face. The gnat, the tiger's not looking at the gnats like trying to get them away. You just, you just look through the gnats. Yeah, it's just swat them huh. away. Yeah. I've never thought of it that way, but that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah. Swat the gnats. I like it. 